Hey, what's up, users? This is John at muse for you here to help you build awesome websites without code. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to go over the new updates to a few of the menu widgets found at museforyoushop.com. Uh, so the menu widgets that have been updated are the side slide menu widget, the elastic menu widget, the bubble menu widget, and the wave menu widget. Uh, so now you can add a custom open and close button uh, to those menus along with a few other uh, updates and features uh, that have been added to the widget. Uh, so here is the preview page for the side slide menu. And if I click on the open button, we can see the menu here and we can go to the different sections. And when you click on the menu item, this is this is another update. When you click on the menu items, um, you can close the menu. So for a one, one page scrolling website, this is really useful because uh, you can close the menu when the user is scrolling to the different sections. Um, and then we have the, the custom close button and you can rotate the close button on hover. Uh, which is a nice effect. You can also rotate the open button on hover as well. Okay, so these updates have been added to all the widgets. Uh, the bubble menu widget and the wave menu widget don't have the uh, close button rotation on hover because that close button is already animating when you open the menu. Um, so I'll go back to the shop and I'll show the other widgets as well. So we have the elastic menu and we open it has a nice animation we can scroll to the different sections looks good and this has a uh, the ability to rotate the close button on hover as well and zoomed in there let me go back and then we have the bubble menu and this one has a kind of a bubble effect when it opens you can go to the different sections and we have the the wave menu and here it is and the menu is here in the lower right hand corner and we can go to the different sections as well okay and we have a close button here for the menu button all right looks good so i'll go back to the shop and i'll read over uh, the updates that have been added to these menus. Um, so here, this applies to all the menus um, except the bubble and wave menu don't have the rotating close button. Um, so here are the updates. So there's a new widget interface. There's new widget options. Um, there's the ability to add an image for the menu open and menu close buttons. There's the ability to set the size for the menu uh, set the size for the menu open and menu close button. There's the ability to add an open button hover image so you can have uh, you can have the image change on hover. Uh, there's the ability to rotate and open the close button on hover. There's the ability to close the menu when clicking on the links. There's the ability to close the menu when clicking on the menu. There's the, the ability to add spacing between menu items. There's the ability to enable or disable the icons. Uh, the icons can now be added by entering the icon name from Font Awesome. Uh, there's the ability, the ability to add tracking, which is letter spacing, to the text in the menu, so you can have more spacing between the letters in the menu. Um, there's the ability to add text decoration to menu items on Hover. There's the, the ability to open links in a new page. Um, I've included the linking more info section for easy reference on linking menu items. Um, and I've also included a reference on how to change the font for the menu within the widget. And there's updated code within uh, the widgets there. Uh, so in this video tutorial, I'm gonna showcase where to access the widgets and how to use them. Uh, so to access the widgets, you simply go to museforyoushop.com and here you, you can click on the pop-up and here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. Or if you'd like to subscribe with PayPal, you can click here and subscribe with PayPal. Uh, the menu widgets are here. So we have the, the uh, elastic menu widget. I think I passed it here. So let me just uh, type this. So we have the side slide menu widget. Uh, we have the wave menu widget and we have the bubble menu widget. And then the elastic menu widget is right up here. Or maybe I passed it, I probably passed it. Uh, do, 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 do. Yep, the elastic menu widget is here. So elastic menu widget, 
we have the side slide menu widget, the wave menu widget, and the bubble menu widget. Uh, so I'll go ahead and showcase how to use the widget. So I'll open up my Adobe Muse website. Uh, now this is a website I created. Um, there was a time-lapse video. The last video I did was a time-lapse and I created this website for the time-lapse. Uh, and the menu we have here is the, uh, the double reveal menu there. And I added some interesting icons for the double reveal menu. So I'll be using this website to showcase um, the, the new updates to the menu widgets. Um, if you did want to create a new website, you could just go to File, New Site. Um, so for now, I'm just going to delete uh, the double reveal menu and I'm going to hide this circle here in the back by going to the Layers panel. Okay, so I'll go into my Library panel and I'll type in, uh, we'll do the Side Slide menu first. And it's now Side Slide Menu Widget 1.3, so I'll click, hold, and drag and place onto my Adobe Muse website. Uh, so at first, it's just a box um, with an exclamation point in it. Um, it is working. It just needs an open button image to, so the open button image uh, shows up here. So I'll go into the widget options and you'll see the widget options here. We have menu, open button, close button, link styling, icons, menu items, and anchor point scrolling. So you can kind of set the speed uh, and the easing for the anchor point scrolling uh, when scrolling through the website. And there's linking more info as well to see how to link the menu items. Um, so with the side slide menu, you can place it on the left or the right. So we'll leave it on the left and um, yeah, we'll leave it on the left. And then uh, if you did want to place it on the right, uh, you could just enter in right and then the menu on right option would have to be checked as well. Uh, so for now, I'll just leave it on the left and I'll place the menu button on the left here. Uh, so now I'll go to the open button and here we can set the open button width and the open button height and then we can select an open button image. So here I'll click add file and then I have a few icons here. So I'll double click here and then I do want an open button uh, to enable a hover image so that the image changes on hover. So here I'll select an open button image on hover and I'll select this blue, uh, this blue open button. Um, I don't want the open button to rotate on hover, so I'll just go to the close button now. So here again, we can change the close button width and height. So here I'll click add file and I'll select this close icon light and I do want it to rotate on hover, so we'll leave enable rotate on hover checked and it's gonna rotate 360 degrees. Um, the rotation duration is one second, it's in milliseconds, so 1000 milliseconds equals one second. And you can choose from over 30 different easing options for the rotation. Um, and I do want the, the menu to close on menu item click. Um, for now, we won't close it when you click on the menu, just when you click on the menu, menu items or the links. All right, so then we'll go to link styling. Um, you can set the link color and the link hover color. So we'll leave it like that. Uh, the font size is in EM. Uh, 1 EM equals 16 pixels. So if I were to enter in 2, it would be 32 pixels. Uh, so I'll just say 1.3 to make it a little bit larger. Uh, the font weight is uh, kind of the thickness and, uh, yeah, the thickness of the font. 400 is normal. Anything less than 400 is, is thinner. Anything greater than 400 is bolder. Uh, the letter spacing is the spacing in between uh, the, the letters and you can add a menu decoration on hover so if I say like line through the menu will have a line through it as you're hovering over the menu um, and the menu items vertical spacing it's in VH and I actually wrote a reference here for this new uh, unit uh, here so for any menu item spacing 1VH equals 1% of the browser viewport height um, yeah, of the viewport height or the browser height um, the spacing of the menu items will adjust as the height of the browser gets shorter or taller. So it's kind of responsive height for the menu items. So on devices that are smaller, the menu items will get closer together. Uh, so let's go ahead and see how this looks. So I'll go to File, Preview Page and Browser. I'll click on the Menu button and there we have the menu. So you'll notice something here. The menu isn't covering the top of the website. And this is actually a good example I can go over now. If you do find this happening on your website, um, there's a few reasons for this. Uh, one of the reasons is because since the menu is on top of this rectangle here, it's inheriting kind of the layer properties from this rectangle in the background. And because this rectangle isn't in the fr at the top of the layers panel, the menu isn't all the way on the top either. So we can easily uh, fix that. We can go to the layers panel 
and we have this rectangle here, this purple rectangle. We can see it's all the way at the bottom. So what I wanna do with this is place it all the way at the top, just like that. And then I wanna place uh, that image. I'm just gonna find that image and place it at the top of the rectangle as well. So I brought the this image of the cup with ice cubes and the purple rectangle to the top of the website. Um, so now the menu will be at the top of the website. So I'll open and there the menu is on top of everything. Um, and that just has to do with uh, the layers. So because the menu is on top of the purple uh, rectangle, it's inheriting kind of the layer properties of that rectangle in the background. So if the menu is on top of an element, you just wanna make sure that that element is, is higher in the layers panel or at the top of the layers panel. And the menu should always be the first thing in the layers panel. If it's on the master page, um, just create a new layer in the masters page and make sure that layer is at the very top of the layers panel. Okay, and I might showcase that in a second as well. All right, so let's preview again. And the other thing we'll notice, I'll go to file, preview page and browser. And let's say I open menu item three, it goes to that anchor point. Um, the menu disappears, it doesn't stay there, but I do want the menu to be fixed in the upper left hand corner. So I'll just click on the, on the widget here and then I'll go to the built-in pin option in Adobe Muse. We want to use this pin option, not here. This is the responsive pin options that allows you to pin elements to the left, center, or the right as the website is changing uh, size and width. Uh, but I do want to just pin it or just fix it in the upper left-hand corner. So I'll click on the pin option here in the upper left-hand corner. Okay, so now it'll stay fixed in that position and it'll be closer to the uh, upper left hand corner here. So I'll click, I'll go to the different sections and the menu stays there. Looks good. And as we notice, uh, there's a line through through the menu items, the circle button is, uh, is rotating and the image, image is changing for the menu open button, just like that. And since I've already created these, this website with anchor points, uh, the menu items are linking to anchor points uh, in the menu. All right, looks good. And all I did there, the, the menu items initially are linked to anchor one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on through anchor 12. Um, and so for the anchor points, I named them anchor one through two, three, four, five, and six. So in the menu, I can actually change the menu items to six menu items instead of five. Okay, so we have them all there. All right, looks good. I'll preview again and we go through the menu items, looks good. Uh, so like I was saying about the VH, if I make the browser height smaller, we can see the spacing between the menu items get smaller as well. Um, this is to accommodate smaller browsers and smaller devices, so you don't have like this really long menu on a small device and so that all the menu items fit on that smaller device uh, there. Looks good. All right, so I think I've covered everything here. Um, oh yeah, and let's change the font for the menu. So to change the font, you just click on the widget and then you go to the built-in text option in Adobe Muse. You can either go here in the upper toolbar where it says text or open the text panel in Adobe Muse. Um, and then from here, you can select any web font from the dropdown. So here I'll say Lotto and I'll select the Lotto web font. And that's all you have to do to change the, the uh, font for the menu. There we go, we have a different menu, uh, different font for the menu. Uh, you can also disable the icons there. If we go to the icons, you can change the color, the opacity. If I uncheck display icons, the icons will not be there. All right, looks good. So let's see uh, if there's anything else here. So I do want the icons enabled. Um, for the link styling, you know, I you can have line through if we check underline. Um, the There will be an underline when you go hover over the menu items. And let's see another one. Uh, you can do overline as well, which will be a menu, uh, an overline over the menu. So let me preview that as well. And so now there's an overline over the menu items. All right, looks good. Okay, let me see if there's anything else. Um, you can get creative with the open and close buttons. Um, you can choose pretty much any any icons 
So let me see if I can find those icons. Um, yeah, here we go, image icons. So like you can choose anything. Uh, basically you can choose any icon and just get you know really creative with the open buttons. Here I'll bring in, let's see, this ellipse. Let's bring it to the front here. And I'll just place it there. Let me align these properly. Okay, looks good. And I'll have it I'll have the spaceship rotate on hover. And I'll preview in the browser. So we want to pin this back here as well. So we can see it rotates and it changes the image. If I open, the menu rotates and we have this image here as well. All right, and I'll make that image a bit bigger for the close button. It's not, maybe not the best example, but I just wanted to showcase kind of how creative you can get with the menu and the menu button. All right, looks good. Okay, so that's the side slide menu. Um, you can change the, the anchor point scrolling as well, the easing. Um, so I can say like ease out elastic to have kind of a bounce between anchor points. You see it has kind of an interesting bounce as it's scrolling to the anchor points. All right. Okay, so that's the side slide menu. Those are the new widget options. Um, Try to see if there's anything else. Um, there's reference here within the widget on how to use it. I mean, there's also re reference on how to change the font type, um, kind of how I showed you select the widget, then go to the built-in text option in Adobe Muse and change it from there. Um, and it has to be a web font as well. And here it shows uh, how to change it from the left to the right side. So if I wanted the menu on the right, I would just say right and then select menu on right. And we'll see how that looks. It opens from the right. I want kind of these buttons on the right as well. Just like that. And I'll pin it to the upper right. Just like that, we have the menu on the right. Looks good. All right, so now I'll just quickly showcase the other menus. Uh, the widget options are the same. Um, so I'll just showcase those real quick. Here, let me just hide this here. Um, so did that change shape? No, okay. Uh, so to add the other menus, we'll look at the elastic menu. So I'll click, hold and drag, place right in there. And I'll just add, here, let me close this here. I'll just add the open button. So we'll do this here, enable on hover image. We'll do that. And then the close button, we do this close button here. All right, so let me place the menu button here in the left and pin it to the upper left. Okay, so there we have the elastic menu. Looks good. And you can have the menu close on menu uh, when you click on the menu. So if you click on close menu on menu click, the menu will close when clicking anywhere on the menu just like that. So I click and the menu closes when you click the menu. All right, so that's the elastic menu. Uh, that's a fun effect there. So I'll go to the bubble menu. And I'll add the open button. Enable on hover image. And then we'll add the close button as well. There we go. So with this one, uh, the close icon is already animating as it comes in. So there's no rotation on it. And the same with the wave menu. There we go. 
Looks good. Okay. Now I'll bring in the wave menu. And you can change the, the background color for all these menus. So in the menu background color, uh, you could change it to, to basically anything here. Let's see how that looks. Here we have the wave menu. Not the best color because some of the background is kind of light or a bit darker. Uh, let me pin this, pin this in the upper left. There we go. Looks good. For the wave menu, I'd probably place the menu button in the bottom right. So we'd do something like this, bring it all the way down to the website. Place it in the bottom right and pin it to the bottom right as well. So here's the menu button, click. And here we have the menu items. All right, looks good. So those are the menu buttons. So those are the updates to the menus. Um, and I will show how to link to an internal page. So let's say for instance, I added a new page and I call this um, about, or yeah, just uh, about there, the about page. And I'll just create a rectangle or square to, to showcase this. I'll place this right here and We'll go to the menu. Um, I'll actually use the side slide menu for this. Let me go back to the top, library panel, side slide, 1.3. Place it right up here. And the close button. Okay, so to link to an internal page, um, we'll go to the menu item. So let's say I wanted to link that first menu item to that, or the second menu item to the about page. So the first page could be home and the second page could be about. Uh, to link to an internal page, it's just dot backslash uh, the name of the page. So it'd be about, all lowercase, it is case sensitive. So you just wanna make it all lowercase. And the same for anchor points, always make them all lowercase because uh, it is case sensitive. Um, so it's dot backslash about dot html okay and when you're uh, previewing or when you're linking to internal pages you want to make sure you go to file preview site and browser uh, this will render all the pages in the website so that you'll be able to see uh, the different pages that are linked within the menu if you just go to preview page and browser for instance i'll show an example um, and i try to click on about it'll say page not found what you want to do is go to file preview site and browser and this will render all the pages in the website so now if i open the menu i go to about it goes to the about page just like that okay and i'll preview again just uh, pinned the menu to the upper left so we can go to the different anchor points just like that and then if we go to the about page it brings us to the about page looks good and if you did want to link to an external uh, page so for instance if i wanted to link to muse for you shop i would just type it in there and then for external pages you want to do http colon backslash backslash and then the url of the page so http colon backslash backslash muse for you shop dot com okay and i'll open muse for you shop it takes me to muse for you shop dot com and if you did want to change the icons for the menu, um, here is the font awesome icons link. So you can just click there and then it'll bring you to the icons here. You can just click on the icon that you would like. So if I wanted this calendar icon, I would just click there and then I would copy the calendar name. So it's FA dash calendar. So I'll, I'll click command C, then I'll go into the widget and then in the menu item section, I'll just replace the uh, the the icon name here with the icon I just copied so it's FA dash calendar so now that first menu item will have the icon uh, of a calendar 
just like that. So I'll do that one more time. So let me zoom in a little bit here. Uh, so click in the menu, click on font awesome icons here, and then find an icon you like. So if I like the circle here, I would just copy FA-Circle, uh, go into the menu, go into the menu items, and then in the icon section, just uh, hit Command V or replace it with that icon name. So now it's FA-Circle. Okay, and now we have a circle and the home page there. All right, looks good. So that's it for the updates to the menu widgets. Um, I'm really excited about these updates. Um, I think menus can really add kind of a lot of interest to your website and make your website more um, a, a bit more fun to navigate through. Um, so those are the updates to the four menu widgets, the side slide menu widget, the elastic menu widget, the bubble menu widget, and the wave menu widget. And those all can be found at museforyoushop.com. Yep, so to get access to these widgets, uh, you simply go to museforyoushop.com and here you can click on the pop-up and here you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Or if you'd like to subscribe with PayPal, you can click here and subscribe with PayPal. Uh, the menu widgets are here. So we have the, let's see if I can find them here, the elastic menu widget and we have the side slide menu widget, the wave menu widget, and the, bu the bubble menu widget. Um, if you did want to purchase individually, you can just click on the widget, and here you can click add to cart to purchase individually, or again, you can get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. Here are the features included, uh, the change log, a few of the widget options, and the preview page uh, for the menu widgets. Uh, that's the same for all four of the menu widgets. You can you know, check out the features included, um, the widget options, and the preview page, and kind of go through the menu here. All right, so those are the updates to the menu widgets. Um, again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. Uh, if you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.